Hi, good morning. Hi, how are you, Ron? Good. You're really good. Good, good. Thank you for being a host on Tile Money, the podcast where I discuss the business of tile installation. I'm happy to have you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Good, good. So for those of you who don't know, Ron is the vice president of sales over at Laticree. Ron, can you give us maybe a, a overview of what you do for Laticree and your history with Tile and how long that's been going on? Sure. Uh, let's see. I've been with Laticree for, um, this will be 15 years. Uh, you know, with them, I started out as a sales rep. Um, I covered Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and Eastern Washington for a couple years. Then I became a regional manager over the um, Western United States, Southwestern United States. Uh, became the director of sales over North America, uh, which is United States and Canada. And then, let's see, vice president of sales and marketing. So I was over marketing for a time. And then um, we kept growing and that job got too big. So um, I got to pick what I, my specialty, which is sales and uh, wound up becoming the vice president of sales for North America, which is, so, so basically I'm responsible for all of our business that happens in um, Canada and the United States. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And, yeah, so I, I wasn't always in tile. In fact, when I started with uh, Laticree, I was uh, just leaving uh, or I sold a company uh, called Project Solutions that was uh, an owner's rep firm. Uh, we, we built tenant improvement and we built some border crossing stations. We built, you know, general contracting stuff. Um, I built all the Lucky Brand stores. You guys are familiar with Lucky oh, Brand. Sure. Lucky Brand yeah. <laughs> so I built a lot of those across the country. Um, you know, tenant improvement stuff, did, did some of that for Liz Claiborne for a while. And then, uh, um, let's see. And then before then, uh, I was with a general contractor, a big general contractor called Layton Construction. And sure. uh, I was a project manager for those guys. And uh, so general contractor. So I always tell people, my background is I'm a recovering general contractor. Okay. Uh, you know, so, um, which, which has actually turned out to be kind of handy because I've got a lot of uh, tile friends, you know, the guys that run these businesses and they'll get in tangles with uh, general contractors every now and then. I, I wind up having a lot of conversations like, how do I approach, you know, this or my submittal was rejected or whatever. So I've done all those jobs. So it's, so it's, uh, sometimes I'm, it's handy knowledge, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine so. Yeah. I was looking at your LinkedIn profile and, and looking at your, um, you know, some of your history that you just went over and, mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I was happy to see that, you know, you have a long history in the construction industry as well. So, yeah. So my family has been in construction. I'm third generation. And in, in okay. so, um, really the only way I've ever, you know, really put food on any table is through construction in one, one form or another. Gotcha. Um, although a <laughs> uh, funny thing is I have a degree in botany, uh, and uh, when I was in college, I worked for Dow Chemicals for a while. Um, I did a lot of uh, electron microscopy. I know that sounds really fancy, but basically I was working on uh, wheat and all these other things. So, so I, have a, I have a biological or background, you know, a, a natural sciences background. I guess that's the, the way you should say it. Okay. But the only way I've ever made money is in construction. Because yeah. <laughs> I got out of college and I was like, how much do they pay botanists? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do that after all, which is, I think a lot of, I think a lot of people um, are starting to get wise that when you pick a college or a major that, you know, you better have a plan on paying that back. And when I went to school, it's a quarter of the cost as what it is today. So yeah. if I were to do it over today, I'd start a tile company to be honest with you. Really? Mm. I think there's a lot of opportunity there. For sure. For sure. What, what, what kind of stuff do you like to do in your downtime? What kind of hobbies do you have? Um, let's see. Well, I don't have a lot of downtime. I travel a lot. I do a couple hundred nights a year on the road. So I'm, wow. I'm always traveling somewhere um, in the country, the United States and Canada once again. Um, but when I am home, uh, I enjoy, let's see, what are my first loves? I, I really enjoy, um, I do some off-roading. I have, a, I have a, a Jeep Wrangler that I've nice. built up. We go to Moab, uh, which is in Utah. Uh, we go and we go to Moab a couple times a year with friends. That's fun. We uh, obviously my kids ski every day. Uh, if, you know, 
I'll grab at the end of this, I'll grab my computer and go to our deck. I'll show you what this, the mountains look like. Um, definitely, definitely beautiful snow today. Yeah. So it's a great thing. Uh, and then I have a dog and some people might know cash, but I bird hunt with cash and cash is a upland bird dog. So okay. Brittany and I, I do a little bit of that. Unfortunately, I don't get to do it as much as I'd like. Um, cause when I'm home, I'm typically with my, you know, I have three daughters and yeah, yeah. they keep me super busy. I imagine. My wife has never ending honeydews. Yeah. So I imagine as well. So nice. Well, thank you for sharing that. Appreciate it. What, um, you know, I want to talk about your, your presence on social media. It's okay. pretty legendary within, within the tile groups online. Okay. Um, you're, you're available to the tile community and we, we appreciate it. It's, mm -hmm. it's amazing. You know, you make yourself available. If you were currently, like you said, if you today decided to start your own tile installation company, how would you be using social media to grow that company? Oh, it's a great question. That's a really good question. Um, first of all, we live in a really special time. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think you got to kind of start there understanding that a lot of the tools and access that we have today literally did not exist in even 2001 or, or 2005, you know, it just wasn't even available. There was right. no such thing as Instagram. There was no such thing as, you know, Facebook, uh, you know, uh, LinkedIn, all these other ways that you can get uh, mind share, really, right? Yeah. And um, so if I were to start another business, regardless of, you know, regardless of where it was, whether it was in the, the construction space or, I don't know, just selling my favorite widget, whatever, right. social media would be a core part of my uh, marketing effort. And the, re the reason is, is the cost to entry is very low. Um, in fact, you know, this conversation proves it. We're, you know, we're not a lot out of pocket to talk together right now. And, and, you know, we might have an opportunity to help someone out, right? We, have, we might have an opportunity to give somebody an idea that might change the trajectory of where they're going, which, you know, so for me, this is really fun. I, I, I this is what I, what I, what I like to do. So um, when you look at social media as a whole, it's a great platform and tool that you can talk to a lot of people you can help a lot of people and uh, you can show up with your best self. And, and typically speaking, uh, the, the laws of reciprocity basically say that if you're a good person and you're putting good things out there, thing, you know, the world will be the path to your door. Yeah. I really believe that is a core philosophy. And um, I think social media is a great way to do that. So if, so switching gears. So if I were a contractor, um, every job that I do, I would have an opportunity not only to um, show what I could do, my talents, but I could also highlight the talents of other people. And um, even if it's as simple as, you know, uh, doing a, a video tour of every single job and bragging on the great granite countertop guy, hey, you know what, this company came through, I used uh, rock solid uh, quartz or, or stone for this and, and they did a great job. Um, look at the, you know, look at the edges, look at, you know, highlighting things that they did well, what will happen there. And I know it sounds kind of crazy, like, but by the highlighting the good work of others and the team that supports you as a business, regardless of your size, yeah. um, it does a couple of things. It endears you to an audience of, of new eyeballs, people, their first impression is positive generally. And then, and then secondly, you get the, the benefit of having, lifted up someone else's business and they're going to feel like, Hey, you know what? This guy's a pretty good guy. Maybe I should also give him a plug. Or if someone asks, you know, Hey, who's a good tile setter? Who should I use? You've just increased your word of mouth marketing exponentially. Yes. And the beautiful part about it is, is that you can also do it in a way that's lasting. So you might only get, you know, people measure things on likes and views, right? Well, likes and views over how long? Because I did a post uh, in 2000, 2000? Yeah, 2006 okay. um, on John Bridge Forum. Okay, 12 and, years ago. Yep, and the post was um, Spectralock, nothing to fear. As a matter of fact, you can look at it now. Okay. Um, uh, that post was when we, we were in the thick of launching Spectralock. Um, it was 
<laughs> people were afraid of epoxies. Yeah. Everybody was like, you know, if I hear the word epoxy, I'm, you know, I'm running away. <laughs> um, and so I put this post together of just kind of common things that we had learned in sales. I was a sales rep at the time, you know, from the field of saying, Hey, if you use cold water versus hot water, it's going to be better. If you use microfiber towels to clean up at the end, it's going to be better. So little tips and tricks, right? Yep. Well, when I first did that post, there's not a lot of people that read it, you know, but it wound up having a life of its own. It wound up living much, much longer and thousands of people, tens of thousands of people. And then even now, um, all these people that have read that post and you look at the comments and there's, I don't even know whether they shut the comments down. There's hundreds and hundreds of comments now. So it's lived and it's creating a life of its own. And I like to think that that good 10 minutes worth of work that I did might have helped hundreds of jobs out. And in fact, it might have saved somebody's bacon because if anybody's ever had a, an epoxy job go badly, yes. you know, it can be expensive. And hopefully my 10 minutes of work might have saved someone from having that issue. You know, and so did I sell a lot of Spectralock doing that? As a sales rep, you know, a lot of people would start thinking, well, what's that got to do with sales? It's got a lot to do with sales. And, and it has a lot to do with enduring um, positive outlook that you give people on a brand or, or those kind of things. So, so it's the same exact thing that I would do if I were a tile installer. You know, I'd be highlighting the work of the designers that I worked with, even if they bugged me. <laughs> you know, uh, I'd be highlighting those work. I would be highlighting the, you know, I love it when people uh, post like the cut of the day, you right. know. It's the little things that, you know, you know, a real craftsman knows how to make a perfect circle, right? And, and it's the little things that you wind up learning and throwing out. And I hate to say this because it sounds kind of new, new agey, but you throw that out into the universe and things positive come back to you. Definitely. Now, having said that, social media is very powerful for that. But it also has, with all that power, you can also accidentally do things negatively. And I think it is important that people understand that, you know, I have a rule and I basically, I'm not perfect at it. I want to be very clear here that I want to, I, somebody's going to pull up a post where I was uh, in a bad mood or whatever. <laughs> I, mean, I sort of have a rule. Um, and that rule is one, if, if I wouldn't say it in front of my kids, I'm not going to say it. Right. Uh, I try not to. Yeah. And, and if I wouldn't say it in front of my grandma, I'm not going to say it, you know, because like I said, it stays forever. Yes. And then negativity, you know, you, you attract more people, more eyeballs and that's marketing, right? Mind share, those kind of things. You attract more with positivity and that's yeah. just a, fact. so, you know, are there a lot of opportunities to be negative about things? Absolutely. Um, you know, when you look at the, the social media platforms that are really kind of blown up in our industry, a lot of them were started out by highlighting, you know, I, I mean, in fact, you, you should get a hold of some of the founders of, of uh, Tile Geeks. You know, I can help you out with that. But I was like member 30 something. Okay. And it started out as before it was even on Facebook, it was people text messaging tile failures mm. around each other. We would be traveling or whatever and use, oh, look at this. Gosh, a terrible job here. I don't know how this got passed or whatever. So it started out sort of negative, but it was such a small group of people that were all like minded. And then, I started saying, you know what, I'm just going to show up and try to help if I can. Right. You know, and if I can help out, if there's a question that's answered and some, and I have the ability to answer it, I'm going to try to help out. Next thing you know, it blows up. There's 10,000 people on it, a lot of eyeballs and lots of questions being answered all the time. Now I have a lot of people that have helped me answer questions. Um, but that's kind of how that works. So back to the original point, if I were a, a business owner, I would dang sure want to be part of the conversation. That's it. That's the big thing is just be part of the conversation. Yeah. And if that conversation is developers in your area, great. If that conversation's, you know, uh, real estate people, you got to think about different ways to get your brand out in front of people. Yeah. And on social media, you can look a lot bigger than you actually are. Even if you're a, a guy who has one crew and you're running out of a truck, which is, a lot of contract, I mean, a, a whole lot of contractors, sure, sure. you know, securing that next level of work may be as simple as 
hooking up on social media with the good, the premium general contractors in the area and making friends with these people, connecting your real values with their real values. And then those are the things that get you second look. Those are the things that get you invited to the bigger opportunities. And then it's just showing up and doing, doing, what, doing your magic from that point on. You know? Social media is very powerful and it's not going anywhere. And smart companies of, of all sizes understand that you can, you can start the conversation. Yep. And one other really cool thing, you can have a conversation with um, people with a lot of experience, right? So, um, you know, I've, I've been in this industry for, for long enough and I've had positions um, in this industry that have networked me with a lot of people with a lot of experience. So think about becoming friends with someone. You go on to your first um, gauge thin porcelain panel project, right? Yes. It's a mouthful to say every time I say it to you, by the way. Right. Okay. So you got this, you have these huge tiles that you're supposed to be putting down and it's your first time. Wouldn't you feel better if you had a team of people that you've networked that are leading that conversation in the industry? Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. It goes from having instructions inside of a box that you follow to I can get you to the people who wrote those instructions. Yeah. You see how that works? For sure. And, for sure. and then when you have that little weird thing that happens on every job, you know, because every bit of instruction leaves out the magic of, of the talent to do it and, yeah. and the moving the material around, mm -hmm. you know, how do you cut it and those kind of things, right? Um, having the ability to touch people uh, on the internet <laughs> for free that could give you true expert advice that is, to me, that's super powerful. It's really it's valuable. It really is. Yeah. But, and it didn't exist. Even, yeah. Yeah. even 10 years ago, it really didn't exist. It was very so it's really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah, yeah I lo there's so much gold in what you just said. Anybody who's struggling with their social media presence should, should rewind this the last mm -hmm. four or five minutes and listen to that again. Um, we talked about you know, content that lives on forever. And that sometimes we call this evergreen content because it, it really never goes away unless you were to delete it, but you wouldn't want to because, you know, it's a long game we're playing here with the social media, a blog post. We're wanting this content to, you know, be practical for years and years and, and bring our clients back to us. Right, right. So, you know, you think about the long game and that's a really an interesting thing too. All of marketing, my gathering mindshare of your business to your target market, all of that is a long game process. Right. You know, so for example, the Laticrete brand is 67 years old. I mean, it's an old brand, right? Yes. But it was a small business once. Okay. You got to think about that. It yeah. was a small business once yeah. and it's a family owned business now. So, you know, we're, we're, it's not like we're publicly traded and, you know, we've got, you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to go out and just canvas the world like some dot-com company getting our, our brand out there. You know, right. we don't have the ability to do that. Even now, today, we have to intelligently gain mindshare even today. Right. So it's a long game. You never stop. So everybody's business that I've ever talked to, and once again, I'm talking to the guys who are the single truck, you know, um, maybe one helper guy. Uh, right. My favorite people, actually. These are some of my favorite people because I really feel like um, there's so many. And, and the bigger part is little course corrections now in that size of a business change the, the entire trajectory of the of the way the business is going 10 years from now. So the industry, even. even the industry, exactly. So, so when, you, when you start thinking about um, those types of, of people and they don't think about their business as having an accounting part of it, having a, you know, you have a finance part, okay? You have a marketing part, you have a sales part, you have an operations part. No matter what, no matter if you do, if you do $100,000 a year in business total, all in, um, you still have all of those functions. 
So when people are entrepreneurial minded and they want to go out on their own and things like that, I always recommend that you think about um, the strengths that you have. What do you love to do? What, when you're doing it, you feel stronger, right? These are the things that you do that are naturally great. You're great at and recognize the things that you're not super strong at and make sure that when you do think about expanding your team, either via subcontracted, meaning hiring an accountant or hiring a controller or, or, or you know, something like that, that you're subcontracting that work that you dread. Right. I promise you, you will thank yourself later because right. you'll, you'll surround yourself with people who are actually helping you build that business bigger and you're also taking the drudgery out that makes it so that everybody's business gets to a point where one day you look at your books and you go I don't know that I'm gonna make it anymore. Right? right okay so everybody does that by the way I did that just just to give you a frame of reference right. so when I started my owner's rep firm after the 2002 Winter Olympics happened I was with Leighton Construction okay. and we, that's where I met at an event there is where I met Liz Claiborne Okay. The Liz Claiborne people. And that's when I decided, you know, I should go on my own. You know, I should, I could, I should do this. So I had employees, I had payroll, I had all this stuff. So I know that feeling, that, that feeling of like knowing cash flow and, and being wondering whether I'm going to make payroll. It's a serious feeling. It's a yeah. very serious feeling. And that actually has shaped a lot of the way I do business because I can help in those particular situations. And 90% of what my problems were back then was that I felt like I had to do it all myself. And I didn't realize that, you know, look, you're paying for it one way or another. You're either right. gonna, you're either gonna work nights, weekends, work yourself to, to a nub, and you're not gonna be able to have enough energy to keep going. Right. right? Or, <laughs> or you wind up rec recognizing that and you do the, do the good job of diversifying yourself, you know? So, anyway, so we got a little off topic there, but no, no. In fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was actually going to bring it up anyways, because uh, like I mentioned, I was, I was going over your bio on, on um, LinkedIn last night. And mm -hmm. one of the things you have several really good bullet points there, but one of the things <laughs> I wrote that, like, I don't even remember how long ago, a long time ago. Well, you know what? It's, it's that evergreen content that we were just talking about. So yeah. you said, you said no and accept your blind spots. We all have things that we don't do well. That's why I need you and you need me. hundred percent. And that, right. is, that just resonated with me and I was hoping we could touch on it and you just did, you know, we yeah. have to rely on, other people, whether that be our employees or other sob contractors or, you know, uh, bookkeepers or whatever it's going to take. I'm going to take it further. Let's say I went out, let's, let's say tomorrow I decided, you know what? I love installing tile. I'm going to start my own. So I go out, I grab my, my Jeep, I turn it in, I go get a, the, the latest and greatest truck, right? All the equipment, tile saw, and now I'm a tile setter, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's how it happens sometimes. That's it. <laughs> okay. So let's say I am. All right. Well, there are employees <coughs> that are all around you. You're just not thinking about it. So for example, joining industry associations, sort of a hot topic right now. Sure. Like there's a, there's a group of people that are, that don't understand the, the benefit of joining these things. Right. First of all, um, if you were a doctor, they'd be asking you to do continuing education. Would they not? Definitely. Definitely. You were an architect. You, they'd be asking you to do continuing education, right? Yes. Okay, so in our industry, how are you going to do continuing education? How are you going to do it? If you're just that tr guy in a truck, right, and you're just, in some cases, hooked up with a builder or a designer that's feeding you work or, or you're even, you know, a custom tile shop guy or tile guy that's uh, – doing direct transactions with homeowners. Okay. So that, that's a great thing too, but how are you going to get better? Because one day you're going to see a tile that you don't know how to install. And I'll give you that. I'll go back to that same, you know, gauge thin porcelain tiles. Let's say you, you had a contractor or a customer that came to you and said, Hey, I want you to install these panels. If you have to make it up on your own, you have missed out on a massive, very inexpensive way to continue your education and possibly open the doors for more profit in the future. 
Right. There, there's, there's one thing. So the industry associations, don't discount it. Do not discount it. It's, most of these, what blows me away is most of these um, industry associations are, are begging us to join, you know, and they make it free or they charge us, but they give us back vouchers, yeah, sure. what have you. So it's really, you know, and I'm, I'm going to say I'm guilty of this for, for many years now. I was, I was one who did not feel it was needed, but I'm changing my ways as I see how fast the industry is evolving. Yeah. How many things, like you said, the thin gauge tile, you know, no one around me does it. I see a huge opportunity there. So Absolutely. going forward 2019, you know, to, well, next week I leave for my first Schluter class. Yep. I've been installing Schluter for a while. Um, it's, it's, you know, shame on me for not getting there sooner, but mm -hmm. we can, you know, no better and, time. And to the thing is, they do a good job. They do a good job. You're going to leave uh, networked, right? You're going to know people from the, from, sure. from, engaging in the industry and engaging in that training you're going to know people so you're going to network that'd be great um the bigger part is you'll you'll have sharpened your saw on your craft that's yeah. the bigger part like yeah. if you if you're good at installing schluter, schluter shower systems right now if you just learned one or two tips and tricks at that at that training that will shave off a little bit of time or a little bit of waste or whatever you over time over the course of time once again it's the long game we're playing over time you're going to be much better and right. that quality will start showing through to your work and when it shows through to your work it's that enduring upward spiral that we want to get to right Absolutely. so you have to sharpen your saw that's okay so industry association industry trainings um things like getting to know what's available that I can do for free, you know, so maybe in the future, this podcast turns into a, a really good um, uh, tool that a lot of people listen to while they're installing tile. If you're installing tile right now, just wear safety gear. That's all I ask. Uh, you know, so, so uh, maybe they're doing that or maybe they listen to your, your podcast on uh, a commute in the morning and it right. just, they get one or two little ideas, makes their business better. That's good. So, so there's, so kind of, what I would that would fall under is be engaged in the industry in, in one way or another, Definitely. if possible. Definitely. We have a very welcoming industry. That's not like other things. So, so I'm in um, masonry veneers. We do masonry yeah. veneer installation systems. We do coatings. Uh, we we sell uh, coatings. That that industry is a completely different industry. Um, we sell concrete chemicals. Completely yeah. different industry. You know, we're we're in. Uh, surface care, you know, stone tech materials, those kind of things, completely different industry. I will tell you that this industry is very welcoming, very accepting. And, um, you know, a lot of doors can open by positively networking with the professionals around. Right. Okay. So that's an important part. The next thing is understanding your blind spots for me is a big thing and understanding that you could call on your rep. And this is, um, this is kind of a hot topic. So I'm going to get a little, a, a tiny bit controversial. All right. Okay. Um, on social media, if I were to, um, like judge a three or five years of commentary, I would say that a lot of people don't have a very positive, um, relationship with, a, with all of their reps. Okay. If I were starting a business tomorrow, I would find every single sales rep from things that I bought. I mean everything. Tool, okay. I would know who my tools reps were. If I used Marshalltown floats, I would know who sold the Marshalltown. I would, I would have some connection to that company. I don't care what it is, I mean that. And the reason is, and once again, you can use social media to do this. The reason is, having a positive network of reps around can save your bacon sometimes, all right? So first of all, um, understanding the materials that you use. Okay, so you're going to Schluter training. I, I congratulate you for that. That's a great thing. And the reason for that is you're gonna, like I said before, you're gonna network, you're gonna know people in this guy. So let's imagine that you get on a weird job or something just goes sideways. And by the way, if we do business long enough, something will go wrong eventually. Okay, this, we're, we live in an imperfect world. All right, would you rather be solo would you have rather pissed off every single rep that you know? Okay. Or would you rather have a network of trusted industry friends right. that you can say, Hey Ron, listen, man, I got a problem. 
Now I can tell you how we treat people is completely different when you approach a problem like this. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example. Our, our probably our number one call out as a, as a company in tile is mist colored grout. <laughs> you know, that's, that's probably, right. it's everybody, like everybody knows that if you sell grout, I don't care what happens. And there are so many factors, I won't get into it here, but there's so many factors about sure. what could cause it. It's just, it's crazy. So yeah. eventually, if you do enough, if you do enough jobs, you will have a grout complaint. Have you ever had one? I agree. Yes, I have. Okay. <laughs> so um, I can tell you that grout complaints are simple. They're easy to handle. Okay. I don't care how big they are. They're easy to handle. There's only a few things you can do. I yeah. mean, if they don't, first of all, focus on the problem, right? My customer, for one, whatever reason, doesn't like this color. If you have a good relationship with a rep, that should sound to the rep like this. Our customer doesn't like this color. You see the difference? Definitely, definitely. Okay, so if you have a partnership with your rep, it is side by side now, and you're saying, hey, we got a problem. Um, our customer doesn't like this color. That rep has a bag of things that they might be able to do to help you, all right? Um, tricks, things that we might try to easily eliminate the issue. For example, maybe it's not dark enough for one reason or another. Okay, hey, I'll tell you what, let me copy some Stone Tech Enhancing Sealer. Maybe we'll try to enhance it. Might help, they might like it, and then we can move on. Something right. that's gonna fix the problem. So my training for my reps, just little little inside baseball, is first be about solving the problem. We gotta solve the problem for the customer first because our customer, your customer and my customer, hopefully will give us a positive referral because we have taken a problem away if possible. And those kind of things. Now understand that there are some jobs that are just going to go South. They're just going to go sideways. And those, there are some clients that no matter what are going to find something. They didn't like a cut that you did in their backsplash or, or they got the tile installed and they thought it was the color that they wanted, but they really didn't like the color. And so they figure they're just going to make a big stink and get money back. In this it's a reality in construction. Okay. Sure. It's a reality. Yeah, perfect. Perfection is unattainable. But I go back to the relationship with the rep. If you have a positive, enduring, and uplifting relationship with the rep, your rep, tile rep, sundries reps, your reps can help partner with you to alleviate the pain. They might not be able to take the pain away entirely, but it, they can certainly participate and help. Um, I will tell you that when a contractor calls me and I have a relationship with that contractor, I will move heaven and earth to try to see to it that, we're, that the problem's handled. Yeah. Now, I will tell you also, if you show up and you're like, hey man, your grout sucks and you know, pay me, <laughs> which happens, which happens. I, I believe it. I promise you that my quality control records are state of the art. They are. Yeah. So it winds up coming to this situation where it's like, okay, prove that we didn't make our product right. <laughs> That's a longer haul than what I said before, which is, hey man, we got a problem. I need your help. The easy you way ask, or the hard way, huh? That's right. You asked me for my help. By our company philosophy is we are in it for the long haul. We want to help Luke as long as Luke has a, as, has a business. So a problem for you is an opportunity for me. Definitely. That's the way we look at it. So, so there's a tip. <clears throat> yeah. Basically, to sum up, if you're hating on your rep, you're in the wrong. You're, told, you're just in the wrong. Yeah. You need to make friends with these guys. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah. Even, makes, the ones, even the ones that rub you sideways. And I know, look, speaking as a, as a sales rep, not everybody's created equal. Okay, I understand that but it's part of your business. These guys are part of your business and you got to take them as part of your business. Yeah. There you go. I like it. I really appreciate that. Um, you've inspired me to make some phone calls and I some messages, emails. Hey, by the way, 
there's a, there's a, another cool side to this, you know, so we have an MVP program, right? So mm -hmm. people can sign up for MVP program. You get, you know, points accrued for all the, the spending that you do. The bigger part is, and for me, it's not about the points and we take people on trips and stuff like that. And it's really not about that either. For me, it's, you get the first look, you're on the inside track at Latigree if you're, if you are an MVP. Okay. It, regardless of your size. So you get the first looks, you get new product launches first, you get to hear about things before the industry hears about them. You know, that's where the big thing is. And then plus on top of that, our MVPs call us with job complaints. We drop what we do. You know, we, we try to help out, you know, and, and so it's, it's a good loyalty thing. And, and, and this kind of thing. So, uh, um, and to be fair, we're not the only ones that have those programs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, I'm not trying to just, um, do a Latta Creek commercial here. No, Every, I understand. Everyone has those loyalty programs and 90% of them don't cost any, don't cost anything to do. So do it, you know, it's not costing you anything. So, um, there's that too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I just learned about the MVP program and definitely, um, looking forward to getting myself signed up here. I'll help you do it. <laughs> it's on my mind. So for sure. <laughs> I'll help you do it. So uh, my next question was, you know, traveling the nation, you know, every, every uh, month, every week, you mm -hmm. probably talk to and meet a ton of tile contractors, obviously, you know, I don't need to say that, but uh, what, what do you see out there that you could say is the number one difference between a successful tile contractor and a, and a contractor who could close its doors at any time? Okay. Um, <laughs> That's an interesting question because a lot of things come to mind right away. Um, first of all, I love the business of contracting. Um, I think it's an interesting, uh, a very interesting business. Um, there are a couple of things that wind up um, getting in companies' way a lot that I notice. Uh, number one is people feeling like they have to be the low bid on jobs to win them. Um, I will tell you that some of the biggest mistakes that I've seen in my career are companies that are pushing themselves too far and, and taking jobs at not enough money because they either want to keep an employee busy or keep working and stuff like that. And what they don't realize is that every job takes capital to, to do that capital is cash flow, and so you wind up not managing your cash flow very, very well, and and then that becomes, uh, you know, a real, real challenge. And eventually, you can't pay the piper anymore, and it's done. Right. And, <coughs> pardon me. So I do see that. I see that not very often, uh, or not super often anymore, because the wind seems to be economically behind us a lot. But in two thousand five. Uh, or I'm sorry, in 2008, 2009, um, cash flow. It was cash flow. Guys, guys thinking, oh, you know what? Um, somebody else is going to be cheaper than me. Yeah. Um, my number one, uh, I have two bits of guidance on this. Number one, you're probably not charging enough. Um, and, and number two, and the, the bigger part is, it's okay to lose bids. Yeah. It's okay to lose bids. In fact, if you're, if you're winning more than, you know, if you're winning 70% of what numbers you're throwing out there, um, that is a massive indication that you need to raise your prices. I agree. You just need to. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, um, don't understand that. Look, we're also getting into an inflationary climate. You know, I don't want to get too economic on you, but I can tell you that transportation costs are causing raw materials to climb. Um, uh, everyone in 2019 that I know of, every company that I know of in 2019 is having price increases. Everyone that I know of. So how does that affect your local, um, your local business? Well, that has to trickle through. Um, you have got to be able to um, raise your prices to your end customers. And a lot of people get very nervous about that. They, they, they tell themselves, they get, they cite themselves out. If I raise my prices by 2%, 3%, 5%, whatever, to help me offset my raw materials going up, then I'm going to lose these customers. Yeah. And I will tell you that 
if you have customers that you have negotiated yourself into a position of that weak of a, of a position, um, then you have other challenges on your hands because they're not concerned about the health of your business. Right. Okay? So, so if they're saying, look, if you have, if, if your raw materials have gone up by, let's call it 5% and you've got to take that 5% and throw it uh, on top of your next bill, then you're not going to get this contract. Then you haven't marketed yourself enough to have enough, uh, enough quivers in the, or arrows in the quiver right. uh, because you should be naturally planning for some businesses to drop you. And that's another mistake I see a lot of people making is that they don't do the, and I hate to use a sales term, but it's true. The funnel concept, meaning I have five perspective new customers that I'm trying to market myself to. Right. I, have, uh, I have five existing customers that I wind up selling the bulk of my business to. And then I have some customers of those five that I have on a sort of a watch list because I don't really have that great of a relationship with them or, um, you know, their business themselves might be a little sketchy and they might not be having contracts coming up. Yeah. So when you wind up having a smaller business that you're going hand to mouth, that's a great indicator that my friend, it's time to market. You have to market yourself and there's a million different ways to do that. But, but that's a big thing. Well, I, I like what you said about the, especially about the existing customers. Say, you know, say I have five, um, general contractor builders that have been feeding me work for five years and they've been putting, you know, food on my table. I should really be looking to replace one or two of them every so often, you know, looking to scale up. In other words, maybe there's a builder out there who will treat me better either monetarily or, you know, just run a, a better job site. Well, so I guess it would be down to this too. Um, in large companies, we have strategic planning meetings. Okay. Do you? No. Okay. Why not? Even if it's as simple as sitting down with your wife right. or your accountant or your, your significant other, I should have said significant other, um, right. or, or your, your, your coach in business yep. and, and sitting down and saying, what do I want my company, you know, Nash Tile. What do I want Nash Tile to be five years from now? That's really important. Yeah. And the reason why it's really important is because that starts to tell you um, the skills that you might need to get. So for example, let's say right now you're doing nothing but track work, um, basically banging in uh, tub replacements all day long or tub swivels all day long, right? Don't get me wrong. There's some great money that could be made in that. And that might be a fantastic business. Sure. But you also might want to enrich your business with other things. Maybe you want to get into, um, I don't know, even something as crazy as putting, adding a coatings end of your business where, okay, I'm doing custom homes. I might as well do the garage floor as well. Just mm -hmm. an idea. I'm just giving you an idea. All right. Well, if you have a strategic planning meeting with yourself, even one time a year, and I love, I love winter breaks, those kind of things. That's when I really yeah. do my best, my best planning. Yep. And it's a good time to look at, look backwards. You know, how did we do last year? How did we do last quarter? How did we do, you know, financially, where do we sit? Where are my liabilities? What am I worried about? Right? Okay. So you kind of set the table like that. And then looking forward this next year, what do I want to achieve? Do, and I, and I, and I get really kind of inspirational on this, right? Do I want to, um, your last podcast, you were talking about, um, um I believe, uh, Robert, is Robert it? Davis, yeah. Yeah, Robert, Robert Davis. Okay. He was talking about, um, when he has one employee, it's one really, it's really, it's him and a half until such time as that guy gets to the next level. Right. That's a great example. And I've, I've had employees and I thought about that same thing, right? Um, anytime you hire someone new, they take a ramp up period, right? Correct. Well, wouldn't it be really important for you to sit with your helper one time a year at least, do a review of how they're doing, and then talk to them about the strategy of the company? Hey, look, here's why I push you so hard. This is why I push you so hard, because we need to get our skills up to where you're installing like I'm installing so that I can get a helper for you, yeah. and then I can help us get more work and our, all of our lives get better. You want to make more money? Help me make more money, and you can make more that kind of thing. You know? So I find that contractors don't do that enough and they think, Oh, I'm too small. Why would I do that? That doesn't really make sense. Well, if you don't plan on it, then you're not going to join industries. 
you're too busy. Correct. You're too busy. I mean, running yeah. a business is too busy unless you consciously. You're too busy for your own good. Yeah. You're too busy for your own good. Exactly. So strategic planning is really important. Pricing, pricing is the same thing. You've got to look backwards. Um, companies don't do an after action on anything, you know, and it's a real problem. So you've just finished up a, a subdivision for, a, for a, a, one of your biggest contractors, okay? How much did you net on every single job? And where did you leak margin? Everyone leaks margin. Where did you leak it at? And then if you don't look back and then create an action plan of correcting those holes in your boat, then you're just going to do the same thing on the next job and you're going to leak margin again. And it could be as simple as, well, gosh, we wasted a lot of adhesives because we mixed too much at the end of the day and then we wound up burning. Right. Look at them. I sell adhesives that are $40 a bag. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I don't want you to burn $40 at the end of a job. I want you to mix enough that you know exactly what you're doing. So maybe that's something you look at and say, man, I, I have a little leak here. I got to fix this part. Yeah. Or trying new materials, right? Yeah. Are you going to plan? I got this much in my backlog. I want to try this new system or I want to try this new adhesive. How do I do that? By the way, going back to my comment before, if you're friends with your rep, that's a great way to get free material. All right. <laughs> get away your free material. Hey, I want to try, I want to try the new titanium or I want to try the new max light, new multi max light. You know, if you know a rep, they will typically speaking, I can't speak for all companies, but if you call my reps and say, Hey, I want to try a bag of that. They're going to give you a bag, <laughs> you know, yeah. so planning on that and making those friendships are going to be financially rewarding. And at the end of that, then you look at that job and you after action that job. Did it actually work? Were we faster? Did the, did yeah. the product work the way we wanted it to work? Is this something I want to mix into my bag? Yeah. So but you got to do it strategically. Yep. You can't know those numbers without, you know, doing it strategically and doing it with a system and analyzing every single job. Yep. You'll be, you know, if you wait till the end of the year, they'll, you know, you might be able to get the very last job you did, but not, not the other 20. <laughs> no, that's exactly right. And I'm going to go one step further for you too. Um, there's a concept everywhere I travel, everybody says the same thing. Ron, you just don't understand my market. My market, in my market, it's crazy. You know, I mean, everything's cheap. It just, everything's cheap here. You know, um, everything's cheap. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to challenge this. What state, what state do you live in? You live in California. 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 Okay. What city? San Luis Obispo. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a, you can buy a Lamborghini in San Luis Obispo. Yeah. I know you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, can you buy a Mercedes there? Yes. Okay. So if you had to get your hands on a Porsche, could you get your hands on a Porsche? I would think so. Yeah. So you're in a pretty good market. Um, look at, look at all these things. Everybody's always like in my market, oh, you just don't understand, man. Everything's so cheap. You may be hitting the cheap customers right now, but every market has every striation of customer, every single one. Right. Um, there's a bell curve, maybe the bulk of the market compared to Manhattan. Okay. Maybe your square footage price is going to be more challenged in your market. But I will promise you that there's someone who just moved from Manhattan into your market that expects Manhattan type work. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. You have, so understanding that every, every striation exists in every market. And I'm even going down to really margin challenge places, which are, which are really in South Texas, you know, some of these places in southern parts of Florida and in Florida as a whole is really, really challenged. I mean, you know, people do, uh, eh, I would walk away from a lot of jobs there. Let me put it that way. Yeah. There, there, is, there is some real serious challenges in some markets. So it's not to, not to uh, um, overstate it. But, but for the most part, if you're in a city and you, you think to yourself, if I wanted to buy a Mercedes right now and I had the money, could I pull it off? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means that there's something, there's something there you haven't figured out. Somebody's buying Mercedes. <laughs> Someone's buying Mercedes. Now, the point is, is how do I get yeah. my business to look like Mercedes? Correct. Okay, now, that's a different subject, but it's really important because no matter if you're even in the cheapest 
you know, track home commodity, commodity business, wouldn't you like everybody who pays you to feel like they're ripping you off? Meaning you are providing so much value that people feel like I'm getting a great deal for this. This guy know, knows what he's talking about. He works clean. He shows up on time, ready to go. This is a contractor I can rely on, yeah. right? Speaking as a general contractor, I will tell you that when I was a GC, my list of subs, um, the guys who I gave like looks at every single job, those, those were the ones who showed up organized, clean, kept their commitments, kept their commitments. That's the biggest. Keep your yeah. commitment. Yeah. They kept their commitments. And, <clears throat> and I realized that over time, they were probably giving me a pretty good deal. But I saw to it, as a general contractor, I saw to it that I would make sure I gave them the stuff that they could make a lot of money on. Yeah. You know, Because I'm like, okay, I want to make sure that this guy loves me just as much as I love him. Yeah. You see how, see how it's working? Yeah, definitely. And, and by the or way, her. I mean, every, uh, what's that? <laughs> or her. Or her, yeah. And, and everything you just mentioned, it's, it's amazing because it's, it's simple. Answer your phone. Absolutely. Communicate. Leave the job clean. You know, yep. and these are things that the customers want, and these are the things that will leave the biggest impression. Even though they're small things, they're going to leave a huge impression on their mind. Tiny things, tiny things. And another thing too is um, learn to love to negotiate. And what I mean by that is whenever I'm asked or whenever someone says, oh my gosh, that's, your price is just crazy high, which by the way, I hear all the time, I, uh, just for Latticree stuff, I hear it all the time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's very much like, for me, the way I feel like is, that's like someone walking into a doctor's office and coughing, Right your price is too high is just simply a symptom that you have not balanced the value equation yet for this customer. Yeah. That's all it is. Now understanding that tactically some people will always do this. There's no, you know, this is the way that they roll. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to change it. But at the same time, it learn to enjoy telling people why you're the best. Okay. It's really, really important when you, it's really important. And the reason why it's really important is because I see so many um, posts which someone, and it's a lot of times it's a screenshot of a text message that someone, you know, and, and a lot of them are rude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit a lot of customers are rude, but they, they're like, oh, you know, your price was just way too high. You're just, you know, crazy, crazy high. We, we found someone cheaper, those kind of things. You have to mentally, if you're in this business for the long haul, you have to understand that that is a component of doing business. Yeah. If you stop doing tile tomorrow and started doing brain surgery, someone is going to have that same exact thing. It might be packaged differently, but it's going to be the same exact thing. So that's a component of doing business. So since you know that it's a component of doing business, you stop taking it personally. You cannot take it personally. Amen. Um, first of all, there's two, two market forces that you can't control anyway. You don't know whether you're up against an idiot right? Like Correct. someone who bid the job and just completely forgot the backsplash in the property or, or they left something out or they plan on doing it in a way that is risky and substandard. Right. Okay. You don't know that you can't control that, but what you can control is how your packages hit that customer. Okay. And I mean, I'm even talking about the really hardcore customers, the general contractor who literally just takes each each page and just lays it out on a big counter and looks for the cheapest price. I can help you win that guy. It might take us a long time. It might take us some marketing to get to that guy, but I will figure out why he is not saying yes to me. And I will also figure out how I can balance that value equation for him so that, or her, so that they do say yes to me. Right. And that's really the important part of, of ownership of a business is understanding that good ones, successful ones have a selling philosophy, right? A negotiating philosophy. And I will tell you that just like poker, you're supposed to fold. What do they say? Um, you fold 70% of the hands that are laid or whatever, you know, these, yeah. you're supposed to fold a lot of hands in estimating. You're supposed to fold a lot. By the yeah. way, there's a lot of jobs that you think you want that you really don't want. Correct. 
And some of the best jobs are the ones you walk away from. So, um, so I covered all my hot points, raise your prices, um, <laughs> market your company, uh, make more money, uh, sell. Yeah. It's a big thing. People, yeah. uh, a lot of people, um, are like opposed to selling. Like it's some sort of a, um, a bad, like only car salesmen sell or whatever. And here's a business fact. Nothing gets made until something gets sold. Correct. So as an installer, even as an artist, and I know artists, and, and by the way, our industry is still more art than science. Okay. So because of that, we have a lot of artist mentality. Mm-hmm. The problem I have with artists is a lot of times they never know that the market will accept a lot more money than what they're charging for it. Yeah. You know, and, I feel, I feel like, at, I, I strongly feel personally that. Sorry, you, I lost you. I'm lost, oh, lost your audio. Are you there? Can you hear me oh, now? Wait, I have muted myself. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, we're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah, I strongly feel that the, that the one um, person artist should be commanding as much as, you know, or even more than the top of the line, you know, company. Because your customer is searching you out because they want, they want you. They want your artwork. Absolutely. No, there are a lot of customers who don't care. Sure. And which is fine. Which is fine. Like I said, everything's a bell curve, right? No. They're going to be maybe on the extreme end of the commodity customer. Right. And look, there are people who do a great job with that customer and they make a lot of money on that customer. And yeah. that's great. Um, if, you're, if your business is set up to attack that market, they'll go attack that market. But there's also a really nice part of the market too who are people – I'm going to give you an example of my own – we're sitting in my job right now. Okay, so okay. I'm in my kitchen right now, right? You see that? Definitely, Yes. Okay, so yeah, backsplash. Can you see my backsplash behind there? Yeah, is that a glass herringbone? Yeah, it's a herringbone. It's a, uh, you know, yeah, herringbone job. Okay, um, I did not do that. I didn't do it. I, I know my limitations. <laughs> and by the way, nobody's going to have to worry about me starting up a tile company and, and uh, <laughs> feeling your work. It's not going to happen. Um, but so the contractor who did this, um, it was the most expensive contractor that gave me bids. You know, the most expensive. How many did you interview? Um, I had three volunteers. Okay. And, and three people that, you know, uh, gave, gave, gave me pricing. Um, by the way, I full boat. I didn't, I didn't pull a ladder Creek card, you know, like, uh, you know, Hey, come do this for free or whatever. No, I paid for it. Um, and, uh, the guy who did, did the job was the reason why I selected him was not for price. I selected him because, one, he was excited to use new prototype materials. Okay, I, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use yeah. stuff that's not even on the market yet. If I can. Yeah. Um, and and then secondly, that's the that's Permacolor Select, non-sanded uh, before it was actually on the market. By the way, that was okay. <laughs> so, the funny thing. Anyway, so um, the he was excited to use new materials, and the thing is, he was clean. I mean, like, you know, he set up his saw. He had a, he had the tent around the saw. Um, you know, it's so important. It's little stuff like that, that for me, this is my kitchen. This is my, this is the center sanctum of my house. I travel all the time. And if I got contractors who are making a mess in my house, my wife is going to be on the phone with me every single night screaming at me. Yeah. That's just cool, right? You know, yeah. hey, you call him, tell him to clean up. Okay. Never had that call. Never had that call. And I paid. Uh, probably 20% more yeah. than the guy who was next. And I was happy to do it. I was, I, he provided the value. And every time I look at that backsplash, every time I look at this countertop, every time I look at this job, it went smoothly. It brings me joy. I would absolutely hire that guy again. And when my friends come over for a party or whatever, and they say, oh, I really love your countertops. I really love your backsplash. I drop his card in their pocket every time. Nice. nice. So, so think about, so think about that in, in, um, yeah, I'm glad you shared that story. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, yeah. All right. So lots of gold there. Um, I guess the last question I had here is if you could wave a magic wand over the tile installation industry and change one thing, what would it be? 
Well, I would really like everyone to use Lad Creek products. <laughs> uh, that wouldn't hurt my feelings, but um, what was one thing it could be? Um, I think our, our industry right now is under a lot of uh, pressure um, by, um, uh, you know, different, different materials. So LVT, LVP, you know, and a lot of companies uh, have an installation arm that install this stuff too. Um, that pressure on square footage, uh, industry is still growing by the way, just for the record, tile is still growing. So it's not like, uh, LVP and LVT have, uh, destroyed the industry and we're not growing anymore because of it, but it is a certain amount of square footage. So when we look at these things, um, it's going to require that we provide more value than just banging in tile. Yeah. Okay. So the Y tile, why tile, tile.com, for example. Yeah. Um, it's an industry website. I think mm -hmm. that it should be part of everyone's marketing, everyone's marketing. Why am I using tile rather than a temporary flooring? You know, and if we really are concerned about the environment, for example, if we really are concerned about the environment, the number one thing that you can do to help the environment out is use materials that last forever if possible. Right. And getting away from the temporary fix, even though there's a massive demand for it. And I realize the demand for, you know, that, that is just massive. But the good projects, the art projects, the projects that, that people um, think about for a long time are the ones that use classic design, classic materials, the stuff that never goes out of style, and it'll last for a long, long time. And tile has got a great spot in there. You know, that's a big thing. Um, I would like, I would like um, tile installers to have more pride in what they do. Uh, what I mean by pride is <clears throat> some of the, the, like I said before, some of the best artists I know are tile installers. Yeah. Um, I think there's sometimes a mentality that slips into people's minds that, well, I'm just banging it in and, you know, it's not, I'm a laborer. A lot of people, a lot of people say that. It's like, I'm a laborer. Well, listen, I'm a college educated guy. You know, I work for a big corporation, I guess. Um, I physically can't install that backsplash. Okay. I'm going to tell you the truth of this. Yeah. You know, even if I was uh, one of those guys that would try it by myself and I built buildings, I built my, I built homes before I, I physically uh, can do it, I guess, but there's no way that it's going to be as perfect as that. Yeah. You know, so having pride in the fact that you have a skill that is not, it, it's not common. It's not a common skill. Um, that's really important. And I wish people would have more pride in that and that they would, they would, uh, you know, I feel like society as a whole has taken a, um, uh, is starting to realize that you shouldn't be looking down your nose on people who are doers and makers. Yeah. And, and really for me, the future lies in the hands of doers and makers of things. Yeah. Really. Nice. Yeah, I, I like that. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I think I think more pride in the industry and realizing your value to the homeowner or to the client is is huge. And I think that would I think that's that's a great start. I think that's um that alone would change, you know, the industry and raise, you know, raise standards. Yep. Um, across the board, so that's great. Now, uh I guess the last thing we should we should mention here is just um you know, I I'm a Laticrete guy myself. I have, you know, if you looked in my trailer, I keep um, Permacolor Collect, um, you know, Permacolor Select mm -hmm. uh, stocked. I, I have about, you know, maybe 18 color kits in there and then always about half a dozen, you know, bases. Yep. It's, just, it's, it's really easy for me. I'm sold on it. I don't give my, the only other option I would give a customer would be to upgrade to spec, Spectralock. Mm -hmm. But I don't let them choose, um, you know, if they want a different grout color, I hand them what? A Kelly Moore? Um, or is it oh, yeah, yeah. Like a Benjamin Moore or, yeah, or Benjamin a Moore. Williams card, yeah. Yeah, so if, oh. if they're not happy with the, with the what is it, 22 colors on the... On oh, the, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we have, we have uh, 40 colors base, and then we make uh, a ton of other stock uh, yeah. competitive colors, too, because people need crossovers. But, yeah. And I have, I have had customers who couldn't find their color, um, so, I, <laughs> so I, I would hand them the Benjamin Moore 
you know, 100 and, you know, 200, 300, 400 colors to choose from whatever it Just is. Just do the Model T thing. I only have these five colors. That's all I that's make. All <laughs> you know, if yeah. you can do it with these five colors, I'm sorry. Um, so, so that's good. I'm glad, I'm glad you're seeing the value of that. So the vision of that product um, was that guys could do exactly like what, what you're starting to do. You yeah. could have a, a box of 40 different colors, <clears throat> base that continues to turn, 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 and then have a high performance option on top of that is even better. So, so the idea is if a customer changes their mind, it doesn't require that you get back in your truck and drive all the way back to your supplier. Right. Um, you can you can do it on the on the fly. It's it's yeah. really good. and it just so and, happens. The and from the business, yeah, from the business side of things, like that saved my butt on multiple occasions because, yeah. like you said, if they change their mind, or you know, sometimes I'll just show up knowing that I have a color that you know I have you know three yeah. or four or five shades. I already have the color they're going to choose. I don't even have yeah. to ask, you know. Yeah, uh, and also um, backstock, for example. So I have all this, all the growl that was used in my remodel. Yeah. Um, I have a, I have a box of it, yeah. and uh, it lasts a, lasts a long time, and uh, it doesn't get hard like an anchor, and you know it's in a nice yeah. box, so it's sort of like a nice little presentation at the end. Hey, yeah. here's the growl colors that we use. Keep this pigment, and yeah. you can, you know. So there's a couple of really cool things on. I, I love that product. I was. Yeah. I was a, a vice president of sales and marketing when we built that product. So, okay. so I was a, the process of bringing that product to life was fun. Nice. Um, it was really cool. Yeah, definitely cool. So, so I'm glad, I'm glad you're, you found that. That's yeah, cool. yeah, of course. Um, I've always enjoyed your thin sets. In fact, when I moved to San Luis Obispo, I couldn't get them and I was pretty depressed about it. <laughs> I, I actually paid, um, I, I would drive, you know, almost an hour, hour and 15 minutes south to go get them. Yeah. But, but now, thankfully, we have them right in town, San Luis Obispo. Well, first of all, I hope a lot of distributors are watching this right now because this is my number one um, most common question, period, bar none. Um, hey, I want to get a hold of your stuff. Uh, nobody stocks it. Yeah. And, um, it's, it's a challenge. It really is a challenge as a manufacturer because, you know, uh, the United States as a whole is, and Canada, are, our cities are so far apart from each other. So our distributor partners are super important part of that, that they can help us bring our brand closer to the demand. And, um, you know, so it's important. They, they have a great part of our business and, and a great part of your business. So that's another thing too. Yeah. get a good relationship with a distributor. It's a big, important thing. Um, but as far as uh, logistics and getting our material, materials around the world, it is heavy. Our materials are heavy. You know, we make, uh, you know, even, even our new, new thin sets are 25 pounds, yeah. but at the same time, it takes a whole pallet. It's not, you can't UPS it, you know, it's not, or you can, I guess we have an unlimited funds, but um, you know, you can't really do it efficiently. So our distributor partners are really important. Um, I will say that that's also as a little tip for anybody who would be, you know, having a hard time with supply. Um, Getting to know your reps is another way you can help knock down those doors. And I love it when a contractor, because my, my mo, our most important customer is the guy who's doing the work in the field. Yeah. You know, so if they come to me and say, I need you to help me get material in this city, we'll, we'll figure out a way to do it. I mean, there's always a way to do it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll figure out a partner that we can call to help you guys get supplied. Um, you know, we do that quite a bit. So yeah. we, our new our new thin sets are um, we're doing some crazy stuff. I, as, yeah. as, um, so a couple of years ago, we we decided strategically, you no know, strategic planning process. Yeah. Strategically, a few years ago, we said we're going to double the size of our lab. We're just and we already had a very nice. I mean, don't get me wrong, we have, we have we have a lot of laboratory space and yeah. uh, around the world, by the way. And since we've done that we've just exploded with new products um, just in, in areas that we never thought we would, you know, um, just, and, and not only that, we've made a lot of acquisitions in the last five years, um, six years. And um, that technology has come into tile and stone. It's coming to a lot of different things. So you're going to see us coming out with our adhesive lineup is crazy. Like multi-map. Okay. So take multi-max light, for example, it's no silica which is a huge yeah. problem on a lot of commercial job sites right now. 
silica exposure in the air and those kind of things are, it's very, it's a big problem. Yeah. So no silica. Uh, therefore, it's got no sand in it because it's got no sand in it. It's super, super light and creamy. It's like unbelievable. Uh, super really creamy, uh, like cool, warm, cool whip almost that you're spreading. Um, super high strength, super, super high sag. I can take a 48 by 48, three quarter inch piece of granite and stick it on the wall and it won't slide down. I mean, wow. the stuff is crazy. Um, and then you have, we, we like to think of it as like the all day working time. You know, you can continue to keep it alive in the bucket for a long, long time. GTA does this. Uh, glass tile adhesive does this. Yeah, yeah. Multimax light does this. Titanium does it. You know, our, some of our older platinum will do it if, if you mix it right. Multimax would do it if you mix it right. But, but the idea is that we recognize that a guy needs to mix up a bucket and work out of it for a longer extended period of time. Yeah. Dry light, you're going to have to use it. Get yeah. going. It's got different, uh, different chemistry in it, but some of our new, really new stuff, very impressive where it's, we're break, We're turning a corner on some on some technologies that are just really crazy. And next year, by the way, is going to be a massive year for new products. We've got some things. I'm, I'm so excited. excited about. I can't talk about this. Is the this is, the, <laughs> this is where I get like, you know, yeah. I can't talk about it. But I will tell you that it's a good year to look at us for uh, SLUs, our self leveling underlayments are exploding right now. Uh, Super cap ready mix available nationwide where you have a job that's big enough, you can just literally get it wet out of the end of the hose. Yeah. Mass, massive technology. What's changes. the minimum size for that? So on that, um, 10,000 square feet at a half inch is basically what makes sense. Anything, okay. anything shorter or smaller than that, um, you, NXT is the right way to go. You know, okay. our, our, you know we'll, we'll help you get that. And we can even help you pump that at a smaller, a smaller thing too. So oh, uh, I see. But that's, that's right now, that's the break point. Now, we are messing with some things in certain markets that might make it so, um, let's say the future. Let's talk about the future. Not, not now, but the future. Um, maybe that you buy yourself leveling in this manner. Hey, we have, um, look at an app and see the schedule in your city. Oh, look, they have an option on Wednesday. I can have my floor poured on Wednesday. You just schedule it for Wednesday. We show up on Wednesday and pour the floor. Wow. You know? So, um, not yet, not yet, right. but, we're, but we're, we're going to be there. That's and, exciting. You know, That's so cool. the, so the idea is that we are blending mechanical innovation, chemical innovation, um, looking at fully integrated projects, you know, so we do a lot of commercial work as you probably know. And, um, what architects demand from us now are not only, What's the specification? How do I do this? But also who should work, look at this work. That's yeah. the next biggest thing. So our MVPs are a really important part of that discussion and those kind of things. So yeah. cool. I see very nice. Well, it looks like we've got a lot of good things in store for 2019. So it's going to be a big, big year for it. Yeah. And I thought, I thought 2018 was a big year for Laticrete. <laughs> and you know, when, it, when a company decides they're going to double research and development, yeah. um, that down the chain, that's one of those trajectory changers, right? Yeah. We can, if innovative materials are, ne are a necessity, um, we're, we're, we're being asked to install tiles that are made out of different things that have ever been built before. Yeah. Uh, harder materials than we've ever touched before, larger tiles than we've ever touched before, smaller grout joints than we've ever dealt with before, yeah. which by the way, a small, large grout joint is more caustic. It's harder to make a grout that lives in that environment than, than the old school, you know, 12 by 12 quarter inch joint. Yeah. I mean, regular sanded and non-sanded from the old school days worked in that joint. No problem. Yeah. The newer materials that are really dense, not porous, um, in many cases, mixed media, glass, and other materials inside, mm -hmm. uh, regular grout just won't work in that. <laughs> it just won't. Yeah. So the newer technologies um, up there. So with all the industry challenges that are coming down, you know, having a, an active and robust uh, R&D effort is really great. Really yeah. Good. Great. Well, Ron, Anything I want that I can do to help your business. Like you're, you're, you're a customer of mine. So this has been a nice conversation. What, 
you know, what, what are we not doing well enough for you? What, what could we do better for you as a customer? Um, yeah, that, you know, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to think on it. I appreciate, I appreciate Well, that. think on it, think on it. And I mean that, uh, I mean that really because, you know, so I started Laticrete Inside Track. Yep. Right. Um, which is our, our social, it's my personal project. You know, I just decided to make a, make a group and the idea yep. that I wanted to have a group where people learned about what Laticrete's doing before anybody else. In many yep. cases, my sales rep even get mad at me because I get, I will get out of a meeting and I'll literally go put it on inside track before they even hear about it sometimes. So, so I do get, it's true. Some people get mad at me for it. Yep. Um, but but so I built that and a lot of the reason why I built it is because I love to hear feedback from the guys in the field, the guys who are actually using it because to me, that's where I find the truth. Yeah. That's where my truth comes from is that when people are using our material and in our lab, we thought, oh man, this stuff is the cat's meow and we get it in the field and people are like, I'm not, I don't have access to warm water. I can't, you know, I can't mix this with hot water. I can't mix this with, you know, so all the realities of the marketplace, we have to have our ear really close to the guys who are actually mixing a bucket yeah. and spreading the material. And inside track is great for me for that. Title yeah. is good for me for that. Don't get me wrong. Correct. Um, yeah. You know, but I, I wanted to have a place where I could have a little bit of uh, control of, of what we talked about as well. So, yeah. yeah. Um, well, it, is, it is nice. I mean, I enjoy inside track, the Facebook group. And uh, mm -hmm. I know you did pose that question to, to all the members before. Um, you know, what, what can ladder Creek do? And, you know, so I'll, I'll keep that in mind. And what I'll do is I'll post that in my group tile money and, uh, sure. to see if we can't get you some more feedback on that. So, yeah, yeah, we're, um, I'm a lot of people have said, why isn't this group like 10,000 people? I haven't tried. It's everybody who's in that group is organic. I haven't, I haven't done anything really to try to get people into it. Um, I have a, Questions that have to be answered, you know, I'm all, it's all only contractors. I don't let anybody else in. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's one of those things. I love it. I love it because I find a lot of truth from it. And, uh, and look, sometimes the packaging on that truth isn't great. Sometimes, <laughs> I, hey, listen, I, I'm, uh, when we do something that people don't like, a lot of times I'll hear, you know, you guys suck. You know, that's okay. For me, that's okay. Because at least they're telling me. Uh, when you get yourself to a point with customers when they stop speaking to you, yeah. that's really bad. And so I like to hear that feedback. I really do. And I, I want to know our best ideas come from you guys, you know, yeah. definitely. Right. And, um, and I mean this really seriously. I want to help. That's a F35. If you can oh. Sorry. Uh, I want to help. I really yeah. do want to help. Um, when my intention on showing up to this podcast on showing up in social media is um, I want my people to be helpful. Yeah. I want my teams to be helpful. I want Laticree to be looked at as a helpful company um, and that we care about the businesses that do business with us. And by the way, we do. Um, I lose sleep over people's problems sometimes. You know, we do care about uh, how our customers are, are uh, handling a lot of things, macroeconomic things and, you know, all these things, I care about that stuff. And if I can be part of someone's solution, I want to definitely do that. Well, it's nice to hear. Appreciate it, Ron. I, I believe you. <laughs> I've seen it in action. And um, I know everybody listening, you know, uh, pretty much all my audience, I'm sure, knows you. <laughs> well, um, I get around, as they say. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. Well, again, I appreciate you taking the time to be on Tile Money and share your wisdom. And I know a lot of a lot of tile contractors are going to benefit from what they hear and this will live on for a lot of years. I hope so. I'm always open. Anybody needs to get a hold of me, you know where to find me. All right. All right, Ron. Well, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you.